I want to discuss the issue of how to install a UHF dive plexer. Um, this is, um, the purpose of this particular product is to combine a UHF and a VHF aerial into a single feed. So common in Ireland and some other European countries, uh, some channels are broadcast from certain transmitters um, on um, VHF and other channels are being broadcast on UHF. So it might be necessary to mount both uh, um, aerials on a single pole, such as we've done here. And we have two cables feeding down. Uh, the first cable is the UHF and the second one is the VHF. So how to join these into um, a single feed? Now you have two main choices here. You can feed them into a power distribution system, which will take two feeds. Or alternatively, and considerably more cheaply, uh, you can use a diplexer. So there's two basic types of diplexers. They work in exactly the same manner. You have an F-type diplexer here. This one is supplied by Triax. Um, it has a VHF input, a UHF input, and an output then coming um, back out, which will feed the, a, a distribution system or a number of uh, televisions via the splitter. Uh, alternatively, you have exactly the same type of product, but this time using a saddle and clamp mechanism. These are normally cheaper but, uh, and not quite as handy to install, yet um, they they're, can be just as efficient um, and effective. Um, so there's a VHF, a UHF, and a, and a common output. So two feeds in and one feed out. Um, so I, for this particular example, I'm going to show you how to um, install a Triax um, um, unit here. So what we will do is, in terms of tools, um, for this one we will simply need a snips. If we were doing the saddle and clamp, we would need a snips and a flathead uh, screwdriver like this one here. Uh, so um, I've already, on the first cable here, put on an f pad connector, and on the second one, I've pared down the end of the cable, and I use my snips to leave about seven to eight, six to seven millimeters of white foam. And the purpose of leaving this gap is to ensure that uh, the cable, um, the air cable, um, which is wrapped around the thing, doesn't touch the centre cable, which is uh, in the centre here. So what I do now is I have an F-head connector. I screw this F connector onto the end of the cable. And I screw it onto a point where the white foam is level with the base of the cable. And I use the snips now to uh, cut the cable. Now we cut these cables to this length because we wanted to leave it in a position where the, the diplex can be mounted on the pole uh, not interfere with either aerials and not interfere with the bracket that um, is um, holding the pole in the position of a chimney or a wall bracket. So this type of cable is ideal, but what we'll do is we'll feed the cable down and loop it back up. So in this particular case here, you know, what I'll do is I'll just simply open up this, um, um, I'll open this um, uh, unit here. Now I'll check this cable here, it's coming from the UHF aerial and I'll feed it into the UHF side of the um, power unit here, or of, of the die picture here. So I'll just stand up for this picture part of it. Um, so that's the first cable sufficiently. Um, things. It takes about maybe seven or eight turns around get it fully uh, screwed on and we have the first area connected. Now we must connect the second cable. Um, it's exactly the same process here. Uh, we screw it on repeatedly. This will feed in the UHF um, area into um, the system. And now the final step is what we'll normally do here is we would use tie wraps at this point in time. We tie wrap the cables tightly onto the um, the pole, and we would also use um, use a cable here, an output cable. So it's a cable similar to this will feed into the distribution here to the output slot. And when we screw this on now, we can actually come and feed this into either a splitter or a distribution system or directly to another television. So that is a diplexer fully um, supplied and fitted or um, assembled. Now the next thing to do is we push this unit back across and we slide this down. The most important thing with these die textures, um, apart from ensuring that the wiring is correctly done, is to ensure that the die texture is not held upside down. If it's mounted this way, water will follow the cables and flood the die texture, and within a matter of days um, or weeks, uh, the die texture will stop working um, because it will be waterlogged. So, what we
we would do now is we would hold this slide picture like this and then we would apply a series of tie wraps. One tie wrap around the back of the aerial here and this one here, this you can see here there's a tie wrap on this particular one um, and we would just clamp it in here and that's it, more or less complete and uh, the die picture has been successfully fitted. So that's um, the various steps involved.